Swimoutlet.com delivers the best online shopping experience. With an extensive selection and the lowest prices, you're guaranteed to find the product you need. Here's what you get. Free shipping on all orders over $49. Free one to two day shipping on all orders over $99. All orders placed by 6 p.m. ship out the same day. Shop at Swimoutlet.com, the web's most popular swim shop. This is the Morning Swim Show for Monday, August 6, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. The swimming competition is complete at the London Olympics, and we're back to our regular schedule on the Morning Swim Show. And what a great guest we have for you on our first show back. Tom Speedling was Rebecca Sony's age group coach, and he's here now in the Finis Monitor to talk about grooming an Olympic champion. Coach, welcome to the Morning Swim Show. How are you today? Great, nice to be here. Well, I just want to mention you are the head coach of the Scarlet Aquatic Club out there in New Jersey. How long have you been a coach there? I've been uh, with Scarlet since 1996, and I took over as a head coach of Scarlet Aquatic Club 2002. We actually recently uh, merged uh, with three other clubs, and we're now Scarlet Aquatics. Uh, I'm the head coach of the, uh, the Rutgers University division. We actually have uh, three other uh, head coaches as well. Right. Um, we're, we're four New Jersey teams that combined into one. Well, that must be uh, a lot of a lot of responsibility for you, and it's probably a good sign that your club's growing by such a huge margin that you're all merging together. Uh, it's an exciting time for us here. Well, as we said, you were uh, Rebecca Sony's age group coach when she was uh, out there living in New Jersey. At what age did you uh, start coaching her? Uh, she came here at age 13, and I coached her... Um, for about five years right through uh, high school. Pretty impressive. So, and here she is now, an Olympic champion, two-time Olympic champion in that 200 breaststroke, world record uh, 219. What did you think of that, that 200 breast final? Uh, the 200 breast final, I really thought she swam a perfect race. Um, she went 220.00 the night before, and I kind of knew that she was not going to be satisfied with that. And um, I had texted her, and she said, I, I wish it was 100th faster. So we had talked about probably in her junior year of high school, I was talking with her and I told her she's going to be the first woman to break 220 and um, tried to find a school that would fit uh, after our training program that would um, allow her to continue on and, and at the rate she was uh, uh, achieving things. And um, we found a good fit. You know, Coach Schubert was there uh, and then he moved on um, right after Rebecca's freshman year. And uh, serendipitously, Coach Sayolo came in, and it was a, a rough go at first, um, different kind of training, but uh, then they fit together like, you know, like a glove. I think it was the perfect kind of training, and Coach Sayolo has done an unbelievable job with her. Yeah, like you said, a match made in heaven. I want to go back to what you just said. You told her her junior year in high school that she was going to go 220. I mean, I, thinking back, the world record about then was about 222, so... You know, were you just were you just throwing out a 220 there, or you were you did did you have some kind of premonition that she really was going to do that? No, I thought she could absolutely do that. We said break 220. Um, that was the goal. Uh, I think I, I had said she kept going the path that she was going on. Uh, she could break 220. We just had to make sure she got into the right spot. Um, the amount of work that she did, uh, the the base work that she did was incredible. I mean, Rebecca was an incredible trainer, and um, worked on that stroke. For about five years to get it to look like it, uh, like it does, and uh, just still tinkering with it. You know, it's always a work in progress. A lot of moving parts in breaststroke, but um, once we got, once she bought into what I wanted her to do, and once uh, you add the training that she did, we're going uh, eighty, ninety thousand a week with her. And a lot of freestyle, a lot of IM training. Um, you know, I knew that she had. Uh, no one's going to have a better half, uh, second half of a race in the whole world than her, and they haven't for a long time. Yeah, ninety thousand a week. Yeah, she's definitely got a base under her. That's for sure. So, yeah. go ahead. She, she, you know, coming back one eleven, you could see that. Yeah, absolutely. I don't. There's a lot of guys in this world that would wish they could come back in one eleven. Uh, so. When, you know, this is, Rebecca has a stroke that everybody has, you know, they look at it and they study and they can't quite figure out how she goes so fast. So when she was younger and, you know, as she said, you said she was working into this stroke, I mean, were you thinking this was something that was, how did you know that this was something that was really going to be, uh, you know, at the level it is today? Well, when she came here, she had a, a kind of an old kind of, uh, 
um, bring her hands back to her chest and throwing her hands over the water. Uh, that's how she was kind of taught to do it. So um, number one, we kept her hands under the water. Uh, that was the first thing I told her. Um, she had trouble finishing races, so um, that helped out a lot. And then, you know, it just it developed. Uh, she wasn't a very strong puller or she wasn't a very strong kicker. So um, I kind of got the idea of uh, cutting out the unnecessary stuff in the stroke and using her entire body. Um, she really uh, gets to use the core in a kind of a, um undulation motion. You know, you can't do fly kick, obviously, in the breaststroke, but we use the hips so much that uh, it's like a, uh, another engine for her. You know, her kick, we made it really tight to allow her to, you know, really drive with the core. And then basically the idea was after time, not really a pull, but a lift, just lifting herself up and then driving forward. Um, you know, instead of pulling her hands all the way back to her chest and then kind of shooting them forward, you know, it's kind of an unstreamlined position. If we're never in that position, if we're always kind of undulating forward, um, we never have to figure out a way to like throw our hands over the water or do something like that, how to get out of that position. So it developed over a couple of years and then um, she started really getting it and uh, we do a lot of core body strength work here. Um, and you know, we tailor the stroke to the athlete. Uh, not everybody I think can do that stroke, but there are people who can do it uh, besides her. I don't think she's the only person in the world um, that can do it. You just have to know, you know, they have to have a strong core and, and have the right uh, you know, body type for it. So male or female. Yeah, absolutely. And well, we can't, nobody's arguing with it. I mean, obviously it, it's working. It's just one of those things that nobody can really pin down on what makes her go forward. But she has also said in the past that it's really working her core. And, and um, I think obviously it's working wonders for her. Um, mm -hmm. So what's it been like at Scarlet Aquatics in these past four years since Rebecca won gold in Beijing up until now? How have how have kids been kind of reacting to the fact that they're on a team that, that uh, where, you know, she started? Um, it was great. When she was here, we kind of had, we started a, um, a tradition. I took over as head coach uh, in 2002 and she was still here. Uh, great work ethic. We had a great core of athletes doing a lot of work um, and they kind of passed her tradition down. And you could kind of tell um, the kids believe that they could get to the next level. They could get to an international level um, after watching Rebecca. I mean, she never missed practice. She was the hardest worker there first. She left last. Um, you know, she and she passed that down to the next generation. And we have a girl uh, out of Minnesota, Ashley Steenborden, who um, did so the, the work that were, that Ashley was doing. I felt like she could be one of the best distance swimmers in the world. And she is uh, now. She was on the uh, Pan Am team and um, the dual in the pool team. Um, and then we have a, you know, a, a group uh, as, as the kids kind of see that and understand that, you know, if you dream and you, it's not just a dream to get to the Olympics, you could kind of uh, do the work and put yourself out there and give yourself the best chance to get there. I can hear your phone buzzing there, coach. You must be a real popular guy. <laughs> yeah. Busy day today. Yeah. So, uh, but you mentioned Ashley Steenborden, obviously someone who's been doing very well, won a national championship last year. Tell me about some of the other um, notable swimmers that have come through Scarlet Aquatics. Um, Bobby Savula, she uh, is a swimmer at uh, you know at University of Michigan, and then he's on Club Wolverine. Um, he was on the uh, World University Games team and on the um, Pan Am team with Ashley. Uh, he's actually coached by my assistant David Kessel here, um, and we also had a boy uh, who's a Canadian. He's currently the national record holder in Canada in the 200 butterfly, named Stefan Herniak. And um, he was actually on their world record uh, setting 800 free relay a couple of years ago, short course meter relay. So had some good success with the kids uh, doing a lot of work and then getting them in the right school and uh, moving them on, um, you know, and hopefully get them to where they are today. Anybody there now that we should be looking out for in the next couple of years? We got a couple of youngsters, uh, 13, 14 kids. And I got a boy uh, now who's a junior national level swimmer, but I feel like uh, He's going to be a, uh, he has the skill set to get to the next level, be a national teamer. His name is Eric Stoby. And um, he's right now just a junior national level swimmer, but he has the skills and he's, you know, kind of doing what the other kids are doing. He's um, underground right now, doing work and, and getting his base. And um, I think that in a few years, you'll probably hear his name. Well, uh, that will be great to hear another, uh, maybe another Olympian that comes out of Scarlet Aquatic Club will be a big boost for you guys, I'm sure. Absolutely. All right, Tom, thanks so much for uh, joining us today and giving us a little background on Rebecca Sony and, and Scarlet Aquatic Club. Sounds like you guys are doing some great things there, and we look forward to uh, hearing more of you guys in the future. 
Sounds great. Thanks a lot. Our pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, so that's Tom Speedley joining us from New Jersey, and that's going to do it for today's Morning Swim Show. Be sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter where you can react and comment to any of the topics you heard on today's show. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.